Hello, I'm Daniel Molina. Um, this is the lightning talk section. It's the last talk before lunch. Today we have four talks. Um, tomorrow we will have another session. And we already have another four talks, but we have a slots for more. So if you are interested in participating, just contact me and we will include your talk for tomorrow. This is the schedule. Uh, four talks, five minutes, and after that, we'll go to lunch. So, we will start with the accounting solution for Open Nebula by Danek from Testnet. Um, I'll try to get my talk. Good uh, afternoon. Uh, I'm Zdeněk Šustr for Cessnet. Uh, we are the Czech National Grid Initiative and the Czech National Research Network. And uh, this is basically my principal slide. Uh, we have looked at accounting in the cloud and uh, we have decided to try, kind of pioneer a new approach because what we currently can get in clouds when we look at statistics in Open Nebula, for instance, uh, we see reservations, not the actual usage. Because when someone asks for a machine with two, two, two CPUs, they are using two CPUs. Uh, we want to see the actual usage uh, because we want to be able to predict load on our, on our infrastructure and we also want to be able to uh, study or see uh, available overcommitting strategies if we could afford some uh, amount of overcommit uh, in our environment and when uh, on what uh, conditions. So how are we doing this? Uh, we go to the actual uh, hosts and we collect information on resource, resource usage from the actual virtual machines uh, through libvert, through the, through the virtual, virtualization library. Uh, we started with uh, OpenTSB, which we have um, contributed to. We can visualize the results uh, of what we currently see and we generate, uh, we generate reports uh, that are at this point required by our company. Uh, it is currently running in our national uh, HPC cloud, uh, so it is a live project that is already gathering data and we are now working more on the processing part. And uh, it is all open source, it is contributing to open source projects and if anybody wants to use it, take a look at it, suggest changes or new uh, directions for development, they are welcome to do that. Uh, it is already operational, but we will be working on it. We have a, a student who will be committing a lot of time to it during the following year. So there is a big chance of, uh, uh, of implementing suggestions that are reasonable or accommodating for requests. Um, that's, that's basically all. I will end uh, with a few screenshots from the actual uh, web interface uh, to the collector. Thanks. Uh, if you have any questions, we will have time at the end of the four talks. So the next talk is from Alvaro Simon, and he will tell us about the install gems add-on. Okay, I will talk uh, you about uh, gems, in, about um, Ruby gems. As you know, uh, Open Nebula requires to install uh, several gems to work. Uh, depends on the servers, service that you are installing. Probably it requires more than four, around 40, 40 gems to install all to, to work the service. So that is nice. They wrote also these tal gems. Um, script to install all this stuff, but uh, if you want to install the service in different cloud services, also if you are using Puppet or Chef, another installation tool, 
Maybe it's not the best way to do that. So we wrote this add-on. We wrote this for us, but probably it's also useful for you. Uh, it basically, what it does, it replaces the style hems execution. Because um, there are many, many gems, and most of them are available from the operating system repos. But due to a manpower issue, they can maintain 40 uh, gems in the repositories. So, so basically, what it does, the DOM, is a Python script that creates the RPMs and the package for you. It also generates uh, the repo files. So you can upload the RPMs in your local repo, and you can use it uh, then from Puppet or another installation mechanism that you have. What it requires? Not too much. Just uh, you have to use install hands, of course, because uh, uh, the Open Nebula guys has helped us a lot creating, modifying the install hands uh, script to show the list of the dependencies. Basically, it's a dry run. Um, the script, the Python script, uh, only requires the Open Nebula Ruby um, package. Also, Python. And um, installs the FPM gem. That basically what it does, FPM generates the RPMs or the dev package with the list that is uh, included in the Stalhams script. And never ever run this script as root. And use, never ever use uh, the production uh, machine. You, you can use a VM, it's quite useful for that. And you only have to add a sudo configuration in your machine because it's executed as one well, I mean, for example, and it requires to install some stuff like uh, the uh, GCC and some compilers, and also the VM gem as root, and that's all. It generates the RPMs of the Debian packets, and then you only have to install them. And here's this example for Quator. You can see this only the meta package. Huh? There are not only, <laughs> there are not all, all the Ruby gems that you need, that's the Mac Apache. Meta package, but that is that is you only have to or maybe in Puppet or another uh, installation toolkit is the same. You only have to put the list and use your repo, and that's it. You can install everything with uh, just using the, uh, your package, and that's all. Thanks, Sato. Hello, I'm here to introduce you the Indigo Data Cloud European project, which is a rather large project with uh, 11 million, million euros that will last for 30 months. Uh, it's a rather large project so that I can give you just a flash uh, idea of what's going on. And I, I, I encourage you to go to the project website to, to look at what actually we are doing. It includes 26 European partners, uh, including developers of distributed software, uh, software users, uh, communities, research institutes, universities, and so on. The task is to develop a general purpose open source cloud uh, platform for scientific computing and data. The idea is to keep it simple, to uh, make a lean, lean object, both from the developer point of view, using uh, standards and widely used uh, tools from, uh, supported by large communities, and also from the user point of view, offering a low learning curve and, uh, ex and provi provision existing software. Not, uh, the idea is to adapt the environment and not the application in order to scientists to, uh, to not need to become, become familiar with different tools from the which they are already using. This is aimed at multidisciplinary scientific communities. We gather use cases from uh, a number of, uh, of scientific communities, including structural biology, of science, physics, bioinformatics, so on and so forth. And we, uh, we wrote a ranked list of requirements, both from the computational storage and infrastructural point of view. The idea is to have this, this platform 
deployable on a wide range of infrastructures. The idea is hybrid public or private infrastructures. The reference pl platform will be Open Nebula and uh, another popular um, cloud, cloud uh, tool. Uh, the general architecture is quite complex, as you might, as you might understand. Uh, this is a very, a very, very crude schema. Uh, we will work from the, the lower level, the self virtualization, up to the uh, science gateways, flows, and user interfaces level. If you're if you're familiar with European European project jargon, this this is a work package, and this is another one. The idea is to uh, focus on uniformity and interoperability using standard, for example, Oasis Tosca for Cloud, uh, cloud application description at all levels, extend in use as much as possible or extend wherever it needed uh, existing standards, languages, and, and tools, and deploy on existing infrastructures, grids, or existing grids, clouds, and also HPC clusters, and, and so on. We try to uh, use uh, uh, already existing tools, but of course there's a number of tools that are not, uh, not uh, readily usable because they need to be extended. I'll show an example in a minute. Or missing pieces, for example, there is no, uh, no available tool for quality of service for scientific data on clouds. And this is my last slide. A couple of example points. For example, an activity is the development of something we call the geodeployment service, which will be able to transparently deploy services and application on a distributed heterogeneous infrastructure. For example, this is a an example of a more complex uh, instance of what uh, Sara described in a, uh, a couple of presentations ago as a virtual cluster. This is an elastic virtual cluster with some more features and some more uh, characteristics that can be deployed on such an uh, infrastructure. Furthermore, uh, the project includes many open nebula related activities, for example, uh, developing container supports by interacting, of course, with existing projects such as MIGEM. One of the projects, the one we are involved, more involved in, is the Fair Share Advanced Scheduling for Open Nebula and, uh, and the other cloud platform. As, you, as, as was mentioned, scientific computer centers uh, uh, generally work in saturation. I mean, there are never available resources. You can, you can, you can trust scientists to use as, much, as many resources as they can grab. However, perfect elasticity works only in the infinite resource approximation. So what you need, what you need to aim for is dynamic saturation. So a saturated regime in which the different, uh, different applications scale up and down according to some priorities. The current existing, uh, uh, currently existing uh, cloud schedulers included in, bo in both platforms are not made to do this. They're just uh, matchmaking schedulers. So we need to develop a, a specific tool to do that. Then some more things that we will develop. I have a, a small extra slide, which is just references, so I, I'll encourage again you to go to the project website and uh, look at whatever you're interested in. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the last talk is another European project called Beacon, and it will be done by Tino. Hi. Um, so I wanted to introduce you to the Beacon project. Uh, the Beacon project is a H2020 project that started uh, past February, and it has a duration of 30 months. We are seven partners, so we figure that's Openebula Systems, the company behind the Openebula project, and uh, we come from. Uh, we also form a part of uh, the consortium from uh, universities and uh, industry, like um, IBM, Flexiant, um, um, also universities from Messina and the uh, University Complutense of Madrid. Uh, it's a budget of uh, three million and a half uh, euros, and that's the project website. Uh, the objective of the, of the Beacon project is to create an automated solution to build uh, federated networks across uh, different cloud sites. Uh, with the objective to create services that expand uh, uh, across different uh, public or private uh, clouds. Um, one of the objectives of this, of this uh, project is also to uh, contribute innovation from the project to uh, the open source projects that uh, form part of, the, of Beacon, 
like Open Nebula and other popular cloud management platforms. So, um, one of the uh, first uh, design jobs of the uh, project was to uh, identify the different scenarios uh, where these um, federated networks can be applied. We identified three of them. Uh, the first one is the um, what we call the uh, data center federation, which is uh, basically a tightly coupled scenario where uh, two different cloud management platforms uh, communicate with each other to uh, create these uh, uh, federated networks and also uh, to um, communicate the, the availability of different uh, virtual machines to create these uh, federated services. Um, the second uh, cloud scenario is the, um, the cloud federation um, with uh, a cloud management platform controlling a local data center with uh, connectors to other public or private clouds. Uh, so this will be typically, for instance, the uh, Open Nebula hybrid connectors to, to public clouds or even the uh, connectors to other Open Nebula instances. And uh, the third scenario is the multi-cloud the multi, uh, environment where a uh, broker um, is able to speak with different uh, cloud providers, um, with different cloud management platforms, and uh, to create these services by uh, spawning different uh, VMs in, in different clouds and of course using this uh, federated network uh, um, technology that um, will be developed in the context of, of Beacon. So this is a draft of the, of the a prototype of the architecture to uh, make this happen. Um, as you see, uh, it tries to cover all the three scenarios. So you see here uh, things that don't apply to all the scenarios but are needed to, to um, to conform to, to all three. Uh, this is a prototype, so we already have uh, new uh, design components and even, even um, prototypes of software of uh, federated SDN. It's a component that sits on top of the cloud managers and on top of all the different clouds and it's able to create these uh, federated networks that are level two or level three uh, networks. And we have uh, five different uh, use cases that we'll try to validate with this architecture and present in the review. That's it. Thank you. So, do you have any question for any of the talks? No, no, no. So we can go to lunch before.